This paper was just released, which gives us runners guidance on how to avoid injury. And if you think you're safe, just gradually increasing your mileage by 10%, you'd be surprised about what they find. They essentially tracked running data from 149 uninjured runners over 12 weeks. And then they tried to find similarities between those who developed an injury compared to those who remained injury free. I interviewed the lead author to break down the findings. But actually, increasing distance doesn't appear to be a big problem based on what we found. This means if you're following a program that only measures distance, you're missing a crucial piece to the injury prevention puzzle. And while this is just a small scale feasibility study, it did show some interesting results. The variable that may be associated with why runners get injured is acute load by effort. So let's not focus on distance, but focus on effort. And the acute to chronic ratio works like this. Take the average load over the past four weeks, then divide that by the sum of the previous week to give you a percentage increase. But like Brad mentioned earlier, calculating effort might be more useful than calculating distance. But how do we calculate effort? You can look at your heart rate in, in simple terms, whilst your heart rate is affected by a variety of things. If you've got a chest strap, looking at your heart rate is, is a, pretty, a pretty good place to start. You could look at something really straightforward like rate of perceived exertion. So if you like measuring heart rate, then grab the average heart rate, multiply it by the amount of minutes of that session, and that will give you the session workload. And then we have enough data to calculate the acute chronic ratio from there. Or, and this is my personal favorite, assigning the average effort out of 10, and then multiplying that by minutes and calculating the ratio from there. By the way, if you wanna learn more about reducing your risk of injury, I do have a free five day injury prevention challenge, which is in the video description and also pinned at the top of the comment section. But we're still left with a big question. What is a safe percentage increase that won't elevate our injury risk? They did a, a very nice study a few years ago looking at distance where under 10% seemed to be super safe and over 30% seemed to have a high risk of injury. Unfortunately, this leaves a large percentage of uncertainty. But both Brad and I agree that starting conservatively, say increasing by 10 to 15% per week, is a really good starting point and then you can let your body guide you from there based on some internal cues such as muscle soreness and fatigue or any early signs of injury. And while I was digging through the research papers in preparation for this video, I actually found papers that found five technique traits that are also linked to injury along with one simple solution to eradicate all of those five faulty movements. If you wanna learn about it, you can check out this video right here.